Praise the Lord. Welcome to the Fort Myers Seventh day Adventist Church. Happy Sabbath, everyone. We have a second reading this morning for a couple of people. These are, uh, this one is for Charles Wilson, uh, transferring to the Fort Myers SDA Church from the Santa Rosa Church. And the second reading is for Emily uh, Dubai to the Fort Myers Church from the Lehigh Acres uh, Church. Can I get a motion to accept these people as members and a second? And everyone that thinks they should be members, wave. And if you're one of these two people, could you please stand for us so we can uh, see who you are? Ah, in the back. Thank you very much. We welcome you. We're going to ask that the congregation stand for a scripture reading and prayer. Our scripture reading this morning will come from the book of Romans, chapter 3, starting at verse 21. But now God has revealed a way to be made right with him apart from the requirements of the law as was promised by Moses and the prophets. We are all made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone, no matter who we are. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yet God justifies us freely by his grace through the redemption in Christ Jesus whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him who believes in Jesus. Can we boast then that we have done anything to be accepted by God? No, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law, it's based on faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? No, he is also the God of the Gentiles. Seeing it is one God which justifies, shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. In fact, only when we have faith do we truly fulfill the law. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful to be here this morning in this place of worship. We've gathered at this appointed time at your call because you desire to be with your people and you promise to be with us when we gather in the name of Jesus. Father, we look forward to your presence every week, but today we ask for your special uh, uh, anointing and filling of your Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts for your word, and for your presence. May you be glorified in all that's said and done. Father, please receive our worship this morning. We offer it with thankful hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, before you sit down, please turn to one of those saints next to you and greet them in the name of Jesus.
Welcome to the Fort Myers Seventh-day Adventist Church. Those of you who can stand, please stand with us. God is on the move. Amen? God is on the move. We're going to sing that song right now. <laughs> That better? Ooh. Ah, I'm Brad. I'm the Youth and Ministry Director, and the Path of Adventures have had a really good year this year. We've seen 300% growth in our club from last year, which was a little bit of hard on me because I was not ready for this. But um, we've done a lot of fun things. We've been camping and gone to all sorts of different places. Um, we've done with the Shell Factory. We've earned honors, and it, the Pathfinders Adventures are kind of like Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, except we have a real strong emphasis on God, but we do everything else that they do. We go camping honors and stuff. And if you have kids that are aged between 14 and 16 and you want to be involved next year, we're take, we break for the summer, we'll start back up in, this, in September, come see me or Don or Mark or Yusinia. Um, we're glad to help you, talk to you, get you involved. We have a great club, it's, growing, it's doing really great. And we just wanted to say, Yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to Brad and to the whole team for the work that they do, and thank you to the church also for your support, and for the parents, you know, who, who bring their kids to the meetings. So this makes a real difference in the lives of, uh, of these children, and so I just thank you for all that you guys do, and my wife has something that she wanted to say and to share as well. Okay, Mark and Brad. Well, these guys, they are awesome with the kids. They have the patience of Job. And they, it's so good to see men that are leaders. I have a son in the club, so it's good to, for him to have you guys as, as leaders. And uh, we have a little something for you. Um, can you get the other one over there? Um, so, Brad, this is for you. This one, okay, okay. 
Yes. Okay. These are little, you know, they are guys, so we didn't want to get flowers. <laughs> but it's saying, thank you for helping me grow. And I hope these plants are going to be a reminder of us and how thankful we are for you. And the kids can sit, but I asked Ashley and Lucas to sing a song for you guys. So, and to all the leaders, Eddie and Isenia and Don and Justin, all of you, thank you so much for the time that you put into uh, leading our kids. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Mark. I dreamed I went to heaven You were there with me We walked along the streets of gold Beside the crystal sea We heard the angels singing And someone called your name You turned and saw this young man He was smiling as he Thank you 
Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Imagine if God asked you to give 25% of everything that you made. One-fourth, really? That's a lot, right? The contributions required of the Hebrews for religious and charitable purposes actually account, amounted to fully one-fourth of their income, and you can find that in Patriots and Prophets, page 527. Wow, how can anybody live on that? Think about it. Think about your paycheck that you get weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. Now imagine taking 25% of that and giving that to God. How much would you have left? Not a lot, probably, you guys would say. It would certainly be difficult for me to pay my own bills, probably even impossible right now. <laughs> but to be fair, let's consider the rest of the paragraph in Patriots and Prophets, page 527. So heavy a tax upon the resources of the people might, sorry, so heavy a tax upon the resources of the people might be expected to reduce them to poverty. But on the contrary, the faithful observance of these regulations was one of the conditions of their prosperity. On condition of their obedience, God made them this promise. I will rebuke the devourers for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. And all nations shall call ye blessed, for ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. And you can find that in Malachi 3.11. That was one of the conditions of their prosperity. So I think to myself, Lord, am I struggling because I'm not giving up to par? And you might ask yourself that too, and you can answer yourself as well. If we are not living within our own means and experiencing debt, may God help us to begin to take the necessary steps to be faithful and experience his blessings. May the deacons please rise and we can have a word of prayer. I thank you, Lord, for being the father of our resources and our money. I thank you, God, that you have given us all the skills and the tools so that we may learn to use our money wisely and for your glory. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.
children. It's time for the children's story. And our children's story today will be brought to us by Sister Allie. Children, come quickly and collect an offering for the lamb on the way. Good morning, kids. Happy Sabbath. So how many of you like experiments? And this morning, I will perform an experiment with the help of Dr. XL and his assistant. In this experiment, we will use two plastic bags water, air, pencils, and fire. <laughs> what do you guys think is going to happen if we stick a pencil through this water bag? Do you think the water will spill? Yes? OK, well, let's see what happens. Nothing happened. It's probably because it was only one pencil. Let's try another one. <laughs> Nothing happened again. Put some more. Come on. Hmm. Nothing happened. See? It's probably because it was just pencils. Now let's try some fire. Please don't try this at home without an adult. <laughs> Nothing happened. See? You know, the plastic bag represents our body. The water represents Jesus, who's the living water in us. And the pencils represent problems and temptations that we face every day. Now, let's see what happens if we don't have Jesus, who is the living water in us. See? <laughs> it burned. Now, the only way that you can face problems and temptations is if you have Jesus, who is the living water in you. Will any of you would like to pray for me? Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Bless my mom, bless my dad, bless the I pray you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now you can walk back to your seat. Here, let's Thank you. It was good, wasn't it, Mark? Awesome. This weekend, we're giving homage to 
men and women who have died in service. Memorial Weekend, correct? Has any, who here has been to Arlington National Cemetery? Who has been there? A lot of you. Now I'm going to get, is, do you, any, anybody here have any relatives that are at Arlington National Cemetery? There are a few. Arlington National Cemetery was originally placed after the Civil War, which was the fight for, against slavery and, and other people's opinions, but this fight for, to, to defend people from slavery. So today, I was thinking about this. I know it's Memorial Day weekend, and I just want to make a point of that. Number one. Number two is I want to, I'm not going to do a traditional song. I'm going to do No Longer Slave Song because it was originally placed there because of slavery and the people that died and gave their lives for that. Amen? Well, we're no longer slaves to sin. We're no longer slaves. We're, our bodies are... Amen, right? So we, from a Christian attitude, can say we're no longer slaves to sin, whereas originally that Arlington National Cemetery was for slave, the purpose was for slaves. So I just thought I'd give you a little twist on that theory today because those of you who are able, please stand with us and sing No Longer Slaves. for the uh, family altar. To continue in that thought on Arlington National Cemetery, you can go to the front and there's everybody name is known. Every single one has a name. You can find it on the log. Just like God knows our name. You're not a missing link. You're not unknown. Those of you who have concerns, problems, physical, mental, psychological, financial. God knows this. 
Now, please pray with us. Commit your life to him, your troubles, your concerns. God knows your name. so grateful to be here to be your children and it's comforting to know that you know our name where we're at what we're up to and all of our needs even before we ask father we know what we are too and we are um, we ask you to forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings we ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit and guide us and direct us. And we thank you with glad hearts for taking fear from us and releasing us from the power of sin so that we are no longer slaves to it. This world is not our home and we serve a higher kingdom and we're so grateful for that calling that you put in our lives. Father, as we're in this world, we are all buffeted and uh, have turmoil around us. But inside, we can have that peace that passes understanding. And we pray for that right now. We also ask, Lord, that every situation in our families and in our uh, place, workplaces and in our country will be uh, managed by you and that we can be confident that all things are working for our good according to your will. And we ask, Father, that uh, you uh, anoint the pastor today and prepare our hearts to hear the words that uh, will set us free even more. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. He knows my name.